Um, how much, how much is this oil? What? Oh no, that's, that's way too expensive. Oh, I could never afford that for my own health. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> expensive. Hey, this is Lance McGowan with Essential Oils Me, and today I'm going to cover the topic and comment of essential oils are too expensive, ah, right? And how that is it a limited belief, and then what you can do to have an empowered belief system with regards to looking at them in a different way. It's all about perspective. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Lance McGowan with Essential Oils Me. Essential oils are too expensive, Lance. Oh, oh my goodness, what do I do? Well. <laughs> I hear that a lot. That's probably the most frequent thing I hear with regards to essential oils. And so when that statement is made, I just want to go through this video to really help you think about things bigger picture. That's the really the, the main purpose of this video. So the, the statement transforms itself as you'll soon see. But so it's essential oils are dot dot dot. All right. The reason why I put that is for a reason. But the first thing you want to consider are the factors when it comes to essential oils. Number one is what are your health priorities? What's keeping you up at night, right? What are you spending your money on already? And when it comes to your budget, you're going to spend money on your health regardless, right? What are you spending your money to relieve something, to escape from something, to help you with something? That could be everything from a Starbucks coffee to fast food to restaurants to eating out. I mean, there's lots of stuff we spend our money on. And so I'm going to talk about that, that principle towards the end but what's your budget I mean what is your budget because if you don't even have a budget for your health then how do you know if something's really outside of your budget or expensive because you're just kinda spending willy-nilly on based whatever however the wind blows or how you feel right so if you don't have a budget then really everything should be expensive because you don't know how much money's coming in and how much money's going out so if you need help on that like Dave Ramsey is amazing he's got a course that I highly recommend you taking I took it very excellent on getting out of debt and saving up for the future so that's more like long-term stuff but if you're like Lance I did not watch this video to get a whole course on Dave Ramsey so I understand that um, the third thing is timing so when would you be ready right because if something's expensive now does that mean it's gonna be expensive in the future um, and so that's also something to consider like what's your is, would you like to do something today tomorrow next week next month next year I encourage people to always plan their wellness because you never know what's going to happen. Now, when it comes to that statement, essential oils are expensive, there's two different mindsets. One is a limited belief system, and the other is an empowered belief system. Limited belief is just that. It's limited. Okay, It doesn't look at the bigger picture. Empowered means you have made an educated decision, or you're going to make an educated decision because you have all the facts, and your mindset is totally different when it comes to your health and essential oils. And so I'm going to break that down for you. All right, so what is a limited belief system when it comes to essential oils being expensive? Well, they're, they're, essential oils are seen as an expense with little to no return on investment. And so it's just something you spend money on, right? And they're probably overpriced, and they're probably, you know, I don't get the value out of it that I need and, and I could get something cheaper, right? That's that, that's a limited belief system. And then you also look at it as essential oils as an added cost. It's, oh, that's something extra I need to spend my money on. Okay, well, I already have all these other expenses that I'm that I got, my rent, my my utilities, my cell phone bill, my car bill, my you know, all these other things and I this these oils are an added cost. Now, the other limited belief item of this is that the essential oils are procrastinatable extra, right? And so I can put it off, right? I don't need them. I don't want them. They're extra. They're uh, maybe even a luxury, you would call it, okay? So that is, again, a limited belief system. And then the biggest one of them all is what you can become, okay? So with the limited belief system, a result of that is Murphy's Law, becoming a victim of Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law just states that anything that could go wrong can and will go wrong. Okay, so when it comes to your health, you know, life doesn't give you a warning of when it's going to smack you across the face and throw you around like a raggedy and doll. Okay, it doesn't say, okay, so next week, Wednesday, I'm going to give you some stress and, you know, that relationship that you in, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to feel appreciated, so they're not going to be, you know, respond back to your text message when you, you know, you text them. And on top of all that, your finances, how about that one bill, you know, that, that speeding ticket? Hmm. Let's put that in there too. If life gave me that type of warning, I would be 
I'd be life's best friend. I'd be like, wow, you're so informative. You know, like, life don't work that way. Okay, so Murphy's Law tends to kick in. And so with the limited belief system, you're just inviting Murphy into your home to just come and do as you please. You're like, all right, Murphy, just, you know, destroy all, the whole place whenever you want to. <laughs> so what's the opposite of a limited belief? Well, it is an empowered belief system, as I was alluding to earlier. And so empowered just means that you are in control. Okay, because you have the information to make better decisions and you have fact based information is the key. So when you have that information, you're you don't look as at essential oils as an expense with little to no ROI. You look at essential oils as an investment with a high return on investment. Okay, so when you look at stocks, you're like, oh, I need at least a 10% or 15% or 20% return on investment if I'm going to put this money in. And the fact that you're already looking at it as an investment when you look at stocks is how you want to think about the oils. Like, I am investing my money into something that's natural without side effects, without resistance buildup, with something that addresses the root cause. They got lots of benefits over synthetic options and toxic op options. And so this is an investment with my money. You know, you worked hard for your money or you got your money, you inherited your money or somebody, you know, baby daddy or, or you know, somebody gave that money to you. They entrusted that with you. You are a steward of that money. OK, and now is how do you invest that for greater purposes that's going to benefit you? Okay, so that's that's the first empowered belief system thing. The second thing is that the oils are not seen as an added cost. They're seen as a replacement cost. And so when I look in my kitchen cabinet, when I look in my bathroom cabinet, when I look in my cleaning cabinet, when I look in, you know, my pantry, when I look in every little aspect of my life, I mean, I can keep going. There's so many things I could replace with natural solutions. And you may be like, well, I thought we were just talking about essential oils, Lance. Well, there's oils in everything. There's oils in shampoo. There's oils in conditioner. There's oils in all types of stuff. So for me, it's looking at all those aspects of my home and being like, all right, how can I create a wish list that basically is spread out on a monthly basis that allows me to replace each you know, section of my cleaning cabinet or each section of my bathroom cabinet so that I can basically swap things out over time. So I'm going to run out of stuff. Like if I clean my home, I'm going to run out of cleaning stuff. Like if I cook, which I do, I'm going to run out of, you know, things to put in my food like black pepper. So there's a black pepper oil, for example. And, you know, if I use window cleaner, there's, you know, I can make my own window cleaner. Right. So, so many replacement things. So many. Um, the next thing is instead of the oils being a procrastinatable extra with an empowered belief system, it's being prepared for life's little emergencies, okay? And that's going to come really in handy because that's that's Murphy's law. That's like Murphy's kryptonite because now Murphy's like, whoa, whoa, you're actually uh, <laughs> you're prepared for me now? Like, I usually come in unexpected and bust down the door and just kind of take up a spot in your house. But now, whoa, you're getting prepared for me maybe I won't be able to hit you as hard as I thought, right? <laughs> and so with the oils, with my, you know, my videos and the oils and education, you're, you're really getting prepared for life's little emergencies. So when life and Murphy does try to knock on your door, you're like, hold on, man, I got padlocks. You know what I'm saying? I got a security system. I knew you was coming around the corner. I saw you coming, you know, like, and because you did and you still got in, you know, you busted through the window. It's cool. You know, Hey, I got, in, you know, I got insurance on those windows and I'm going to take care of things. Don't worry, Murphy. I got you. You know, I'm going to press charges. But, <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of what you do when you have essential oils and you're prepared for life's little emergencies. And then ultimately, instead of becoming a victim of Murphy, you really become a victor. And I like to use the analogy of auto insurance. And so when you think about auto insurance, you know, it's mandated by the government that you have to have it, right? It's not mandated by the government that you have to have essential oils. <clears throat> not yet. <laughs> One day, maybe. I don't know. But anyways, it is basically... Auto insurance, I don't, when it comes to auto insurance, I don't wait till I have an accident in order to get auto insurance. And if I did, my rates would be so high that it'd be crazy. You know, I'd have to, it's almost like I need to just pay it all out of pocket, which is going to be very really expensive anyway. And so what auto insurance does, it does two things. One is it minimizes your risk of really high costs. Because if my car gets totaled, then all I need to do is pay deductible instead of the full price of the car. So it just minimizes my risk by just having that car insurance on the front end and just being able to have that. And then number two, auto insurance also helps me get back to life and normalcy quicker. So with my auto insurance, I have towing option, I have a rental car option, and I have other things that allow me to get back to normal. Like I don't have to 
take the bus or, you know, bum a ride from people or use Uber and Lyft all the time because, no, I, I have a rental car option and I have towing for immediate issues at the scene. And so for me, auto insurance obviously makes the most sense. And as I continue to drive safe, my costs get lower. Like, I pay, how much is it per month? It's like 40 something a month. I remember when I was paying like 100 something per month. That was before I had a clean accident record and my age as I age and as my car gets paid off and all that stuff. Like, because I take care of business, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be responsible with, you know, how I am on the road and, you know, not texting while I'm driving and, you know, not driving crazy and getting speeding tickets and not, you know, all I don't try to do all that. So because I don't, my car insurance is really cheap. And that's the same thing with your health. Like your health costs will go down the more you take care of your health from a proactive standpoint. It's just bottom line because you're just, you're not letting Murphy come in and bust up the whole place, right? So I hope you can kind of see the difference between limited belief and empowered belief system. And I'm going to just, you know, kind of close it with the bottom line right here, which is you vote with your dollar, okay? I know there's, you know, elections for presidents and Senate and all that stuff. No, you vote with your dollar, okay? That's the main thing you want to keep in mind. And you spend money on what you value. So if you value something, you're going to spend money on it. If that's a vacation, if that's a new car, if that's your significant other, you know, flowers or, you know, chocolates for that special night, you know what I'm saying? But it, you spend money on what you value, Whether again, whether that's Starbucks coffee, fast food, restaurants, or impulse buys based on emotion. I do that sometimes too. Like, I'm like, okay, I ain't going to spend no money today on something I don't need. But then I'm like, oh, dang, that make me feel good. Look at them, look at them glasses right there, <laughs> you know. And and but it's it's aesthetic or something, and it's like, oh, but I bought them, and then I'm like, I didn't really need them. I just wanted them, and they just I liked it because how it made me feel, it made me feel confident in that moment, you know. And and so, but that's not <laughs> those glasses did not improve my health, you know. And and I actually ended up returning them because I was like, that's not something I need. Like, there's so many other things that I could spend my money on that's gonna really have a better return on investment right <laughs> so and I already have contacts so I'm like what am I doing anyways and it wasn't even to block out the sun they were like glasses glasses for aesthetics I, I know you're probably like what the heck Lance anyways um, <laughs> but my point of all that is just saying like it's up to you do you want to have a limited belief system when it comes to essential oils being expensive or do you want to have an empowered belief system and say that essential oils are an investment that you get a high return on your investment okay choice is up to you I put the, the power in your hands, right? You, you got the power now. So go out there and, and do, do great things. Wow, like nobody's ever broken it down like that before for me. I feel like so empowered about this bottle and how to use it and that it's an investment and like, wow. Can I, can I open it and like smell it? Oh wow, I've never, oh my goodness. Smells so good. Wow. Oh my goodness. Can I? Oh, wow. I like. My life has changed. Like. I love. I love you, man. I love you. Oh, my hair's in my way. Ah.